say thank you all so much for the support we've been getting lately on these Magic Mondays. Now before I jump into this video, tonight I will be opening a new Bicycle Archangels deck. And before I open it, I just want to say, if you guys want to have yourself a chance at winning a deck of Bicycle Play Cards, make sure to like the video and subscribe. We are so close to 3,000 subscribers, and if we can hit 3,000 subscribers, I will be giving away three decks of bicycle playing cards. So without further ado, enjoy the video guys, and let's get on with opening these cards. So, these are the cards I'm going to be opening today, my brand new bicycle don't have a deck of these so I'm very excited to um, open these uh, as I said in the intro if you guys are looking to win yourself a deck of cards I will be giving away three very special decks of bicycle playing cards when we hit 3,000 subscribers so if you haven't already make sure to subscribe but anyway let's uh, let's open this deck uh, take a look at how it is maybe perform a wee trick with it. So we'll break the seal. Perfect. And we'll take off the top. This deck is absolutely amazing. I have been waiting ages to get my hands on these. Um, the box is absolutely beautiful. I just cannot wait to open the cards and I think I'll just do this with a, a knife because I'm awful at breaking card seals. Perfect. There we go. Let's open this up. Take the cards out. Jokers on the top, which look very nice. The back design, of course, is beautiful. It's the Jokers, the Ace of Spades, which is looking very nice. And then, of course, the standard deck of bicycle playing cards, the standard face. Do we get any extra cards? We've got a couple of ad cards. We'll not be using them, we'll just get rid of them. The Jokers as well. I'll just get rid of them. Let's take a look at just how nice this deck is. I'm just going to move back a wee bit while I give it a nice wee spread. Let's turn that over as well. Very nice deck. Look at those cards. Absolutely awesome. Right, let's break into them a wee bit. Give it a few shovels. shovels. Right. Now let's try give this deck a wee bit of its very first trick. So I'll just close the box up a wee bit, set it up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 
a random card selected. So let's just go for this one right here. Now, it generally could have been any card, but today's card, I'm just going to show you guys. I'm not going to take a look at it. And we're going to lose whatever card that is somewhere in the middle of the deck, as you can see. And we'll just lose it somewhere, so we have no idea. And we'll lose it even more. And since this is a brand new deck, what better to do with it than try out some of these special features of the deck. For those who don't know, this deck is very special actually, this one that I've ordered. Despite the card that we just selected having been lost somewhere random in this deck, we are going to try and find it by using a couple of special cards. And they are actually the two red aces. They're very special. As you can see, we've got the ace of diamonds and the ace of hearts. Now, these guys can actually perform some very amazing things. I know you're probably wondering why the red aces. Well, let me explain this to you. Of course, we've got the ace of diamonds and the ace of hearts. And I'm going to leave them both out jogged at the top of the deck just like that as you can see and then we're going to use these cards to try and find your card whatever that is and we're going to cut the aces into the deck somewhere so i'll just take about half the cards cut the aces into the middle somewhere random as you can see and we are going to use them to let them do their magic they're magic, they're magic, they're magic. Are you ready? Three. Watch closely if you'll miss it. Three, two, one. And as you can see, just by sliding the two red aces into the deck, one card has popped out the other end. Should we take a look and see what it is? It is the six of spades. Was that your card? Let me know in the comments. And you know what, actually? You guys love when I teach you card tricks. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off the video by teaching you how that trick is done. I never usually teach the very intro trick, but we're going to be doing that today. So if you want to watch along, see how this trick is done, or simply just learn yourself a new card trick. Go and grab yourself a deck of cards. It can literally be any deck. I just made up that story about this deck being special. It's really not. You can do this with any deck. But what you're going to need to do is grab yourself a deck, and then when you're ready, there is no setup. So this trick is Im completely impromptu. That means that you can perform it with a borrowed deck, um, any deck basically. So as you can see, I just opened this brand new deck and I performed it without having to set anything up. So let me show you how this is done. Basically, you're going to start the trick by having a spectator select a card. It can genuinely be any card. Let's just say they went for the six of hearts. And you want to take their card and you want to lose it in the deck. What I mean by that is you want to portray the effect that you're losing it in the deck. But what you're actually doing is simply controlling the card to the top of the deck. And you can do this in many ways. I'll leave a wee eye info card at the top right for you to watch my video on how to control cards to the top of the deck. Uh, ways that you can get a selected card to the top. But the way I do this is I take the spectator's card and when I go to put it in the middle I simply take it and as I push it in I press down on the card. So press down and push it in and as you do that you'll create a little natural break to where you pop their card in. So let 
me show you that again. We take the card, we pop it in, you push it down and in, and you can get a nice wee thumb break wherever their card is. And then all you have to do is cut their card to the top. That move is called a double undercut. It's just when you've got the card in and you've got a break, you cut half the cards to the top and then cut the rest of the portion to the top. Obviously controlling their card to the top. Then you can do any sort of shuffle or cut that you know. As long as you maintain that card on the top, you can perform false cuts, whatever. Just keep that on the top. So, once you have done whatever method you know to control the card to the top, you just need to pull out two random cards. They can be any two cards, as long as they are not that card, obviously. So, for example, you can go for the two black aces, you could go for the two jokers. I just went for the two red aces in the hope that neither of them were the card that you selected. So once you've pulled out two random cards, you can even have the spectator choose what cards they want. You want to take these cards and you want to sort of gesture them to the spectator. And whilst you're doing that, you're actually getting a pinky break underneath that top card. The way I like to do it is just wave my hand back and forth. And whilst you're doing that, you're going to slide off the top card and just get a break under it. Again, I'll explain pinky breaks in my uh, tricks and tips video, which is uh, in the description down below. And once you've got the break, you want to just take these cards and place them on top and pick them up instantly, like so. But as you pick them up, obviously you're taking that extra card with it. So you've got the break under it. Take these cards, put them on top and pick them up. And you want to pick them up nice and square so they don't see that you have indeed got their selected card underneath and you're just going to peel off the top card and out jog it a wee bit so about half the card off the deck and half the card on and then take this other card of course with their card on top uh, on the bottom and set it on like that so this one in line with the rest of the deck that way when you come to out jog both cards they think that they're on the top of the deck, but there's actually their card sandwiched in between. When you're in this situation, the rest of the trick is pretty much uh, easy to do. You want to take the deck and cut the two aces somewhere in the middle. Obviously, the setup you have is the ace, that put the aces together, and their card in between. And what you want to do is hold the deck nice and firmly, not too tight though, and as you go to slide the aces in, hopefully, naturally, just slide out. You see that happen there? I'll show you it again. So you get in the pinky break situation. You got the pinky break, take the cards, peel off one, set the other down and push it up. And you can even move them out a wee bit, just try not to show that there like I did. You can use your thumb to hide that. Then you want to take the cards, cut the aces to the middle, and you say you're going to push them in to try and find their card. And as you slide them in, one card pops out. And you can take it out and reveal it however you want. What I like to do is take the card and when it's sideways you can give it a wee flick. And hopefully it will just pop out and turn over like that and it looks pretty neat when you get it to work but yeah guys that is that trick i hope you enjoyed uh, the wee tutorial nice way to start off the video with my brand new deck uh, let's jump into something a wee bit more complex and hopefully you will enjoy this next trick so for this next trick I'm going to be attempting something with my blue deck of bicycle playing cards that is so complex, some may say it is near impossible. 
impossible for a magician to even try, let alone a normal human being. But before I get into what that is, we are going to start the trick how I would start any other trick, and we'll just have a random card selected from the deck to help me perform this trick. Let's say we go for, doesn't really matter, let's say we go for the two of diamonds. Now, as I was saying, these cards are going to help me perform what I'm going to do today, and we'll need a couple more helpers, so let's just pick two more random cards by popping the ace of spades somewhere random in the middle. We'll go take a look at where we put it. We put it right there in between the king of diamonds and the two of hearts. As I say, it doesn't matter what these cards are. Either way, they'll still help me to perform what I'm going to try and do today. So, what it is that we're going to try and do is using all four of these cards. So that's the two of hearts. The king of diamonds. of spades and of course the two of diamonds and they are going to try and help me perform something so amazing. Do you want to know what they're going to help me do? What I'm going to do is by taking this ace of spades and popping it somewhere random in the deck and just giving it a wee cut. I am going to try and using these three red cards I'm going to turn the whole deck into a red deck. Are you ready? And as you'll see, oh, we still have some black cards. Well, what else can we make red? How about the backs of the cards? How about that? We have turned this blue deck into an entire red deck of bicycle playing cards. Not only that, these three cards have also turned into red cards, but we have to turn every card into a red card, don't we? So I hope you all enjoyed that we experiment. Um, it's actually a trick that I've been working on for a while now, quite difficult to perform, so if you did enjoy it, please leave the video a like and let me know in the comments down below. Now, next up, I am going to try an interactive card trick. I know you guys love these interactive card tricks, so stick around to the end of this trick to see something amazing happen, and it can do is this all through uh, our computer screens or your phone screens. So if you're at home, please play along with this next trick as it should hopefully work on you. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take these 12 cards that I've picked out and I'm going to arrange them in a wee bit of a clock face uh, if we have enough room. <laughs> so hopefully there we go, that's nice. Now I just picked out any cards from the deck, but I did them so that each card will represent an hour on the clock that we have just made. Um, in this case, I want you to represent the queen as an 11, uh, a 12, sorry, and the jack as an 11. So queen 12, jack 11, and of course ace is one o'clock. Now, what we're going to do is, before we begin this trick, I would like you guys to think of any hour of the clock. So you can go for 3, for example, or 11, or 12, or 8, just think of a card, or think of a number of the clock. Have you got one in mind? Perfect. Now remember that, because we're going to use it right now. I would like you guys starting at 12 o'clock, so the queen starting at 12 o'clock, we are going to move clockwise around the clock, but I want you to move according 
according to the number of letters that are in the hour that you are thinking of. So that card that I just told you to think of, I want you to move the number of letters in that number. So what I mean is, for example, let's say you're thinking of 9 o'clock, starting at the Queen at 12 o'clock, you would go N, I, N, E, putting you now at 4 o'clock. So go ahead, hover your finger above the Queen and move the number of letters that are in the number you're thinking of. Awesome, have you done that? Perfect. Now, I want to note that if you thought of the 11 or 12 o'clock, remember to move 11, so E-L-E-V-E-N or T-W-E-L-V-E. -E. Make sure you don't go Jack or Queen. Make sure you do 11 or 12. Perfect. So, now you should be on a brand new card, hopefully. And what I want you to do is move from that card clockwise again the number of letters of that card that you are now on. So, say you're on the 4, you would go F-O-U-R, putting you on the 8. So go ahead and move. Have you done that? Awesome. Now, I want you to do this one more time. Move the amount of letters in the current card you are on. Okay, now what we're going to do is, and this is where the trick begins, I am going to remove some cards that I think you are not on. I'm going to go with the 8. And let's go the Hopefully you're not on those cards. I'll actually just get them off the screen. Now we're going to do this again with the current card you are on. I want you to move the number of letters in that number. So go ahead and do it again. Okay, so now that you guys have done that, I'm going to remove another three cards. Let's remove three cards. Let's go for... Let's go for the 12. Making a bit of a mess. I'll fix the clock up for us. Let's go for... Let's go for 2. Let's go for the 6. Okay, and we'll make this a bit more round now. So what I would like you to do next is on the current card that you are on, move the number of letters in the number that you are on. So go ahead and do this again. Okay, next I'm going to remove, let's, let's go for the nine, seven, So on the card that you are on again, moving clockwise, move the number of letters in at that time. Okay, I'm going to remove the ace. We're left with three. And I would like you to move one final time. Okay, you guys done that? You should now be on one card. And I am guessing that the card you are on is the 10 o'clock, the 10 of hearts. Let me know, guys, did this work on you? Are you now on the 10 of hearts? Let me know in the comments down below if this interactive trick worked on you. And if it did, I think the video deserves a thumbs up. So let's move on to the next card trick. seeing a 
I said, can be random. It can be randomly mixed. It will not make a difference as to what card the spectator makes. Uh, it's, it's always going to be random. So let's just pick a random card. Let's go for, say, this one. Here, in our case, we are going for the four of diamonds. Now, when I perform this trick, usually I don't know what the card is. So let's just pretend that I don't know what it is. And what I would do is I would shuffle the spectator's card into the packet of cards. I mean, that's pretty much random, right? And uh, what we'll do now is I'm going to try uh, something uh, to help me work out where your card is, as I have absolutely no idea where it is. Now I'm going to make this slightly easier for me. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make two piles uh, of four cards. Obviously, one of these piles will have your card in. So I'm going to show you four cards from the top of the packet, and I want you just to let me know if you see your card in those four cards, okay? So we have the Nine of Spades, the Four of Diamonds, the Ten of Clubs, and the Three of Diamonds. So did you see your card? In this case, we did. So what I would usually do is pop those four cards in between the spectator's hands, but since I don't have a spectator, I'll just pop the card box on top of their cards. Uh, so now we are left with these four cards. I'm guessing none of them are your card, right? Awesome. So what I'll do is I'll set them down just opposite those cards that we put in between your hands. And what I'm going to try and do is another bit of magical teleportation. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to try and take your card from in between your hands and pop it in between the other packet of cards. Are you ready? Let's do this. Shall we take a look and see how we did? We now only have three cards over here, which means hopefully... Yes, we have five cards over here. And that means that one card has teleported it was your four of diamonds. A really cool teleportation trick. Uh, if you want to see a tutorial on how that is done, leave a like on the video and let me know in the comments if you know how it was done. Let's move on to, you know what, uh, let's do another tutorial for this video. I'm going to teach you really cool trick so let's get on with the performance of that trick next up i am going to be doing a trick with my bicycle raider deck it's actually one of my favorite decks um and this trick that i'm going to perform i'm going to be teaching you as well but i saw a comment asking uh, where I get my decks from, uh, as quite a few people liked some of the card designs that I have. So this here is my Bicycle Radar deck. I buy the majority of my decks online, as here in the UK there's not many stores that sell bicycle playing cards, uh, apart from one in my city that is quite good. Um, but yeah, I buy the, the majority of my decks online. This Bicycle Raider deck is actually pretty cool and I'm going to show you a nice wee trick that I've actually performed on this channel before, but I have not taught how it 
is done. So I'll give you the performance first and then I will teach you how it's done. But before I jump into this trick I'm going to show you something cool with this deck just real quick. Um, I'll just have you say stop wherever you like right there. Sure. And the card that we've said stop at is the four of hearts. Now we could have picked any card but no the one card we happened to pick was the four of hearts and this is actually pretty cool because you could have picked as you can see any card from the standard 52 any card you wanted but no we just so happened to say stop at the four of hearts and it's a bit of a coincidence because the bicycle raider deck actually comes with a very special card let me see if i can find it there we go so the joker in the bicycle raider deck is actually very special because as i raise this joker out you'll notice he is holding a deck of cards and the card that is on display is indeed the four of hearts pretty cool but that is actually not the trick that i'm going to be you the trick I'm going to be teaching you is the following trick so I'm going to be needing a spectator to select a card and we'll pick any old card we'll go for a random one and the way I'll do it is we'll just say stop wherever we like right there now we could have picked any card but the card that we have picked is the seven of diamonds and it actually doesn't matter if I see the seven of diamonds because we're gonna lose it in the deck anyways so we have absolutely no idea where it is and we'll shuffle it up and give it a few cuts as well very good so it is completely lost give it a wee Hindu shuffle as well. In fact, I'll give it all sorts of shuffles. Let's give it a, let's give it an overhand shuffle as well. Which I am clearly not very good at. <laughs> but my favourite shuffle is indeed the Riffle shuffle, so I'll give it one of them. Seven of Diamonds. 
So this is actually a very nice trick. It's a very cool one. Um, it's quite easy to do as well if you are a beginning or beginner magician, I should say. Uh, when you practice card tricks, this is one that is almost always my go-to shuffle. And this trick can get brought up in many ways. Uh, just when you're performing a normal trick and you do the riffle shuffle, somebody might comment on the riffle shuffle. Be like, wow, that's a cool shuffle. How do you do it? And then that's when you can use the shuffle to perform this trick. Now, first and foremost, you will need to be able to do the riffle shuffle to do this trick. So if you don't know how to do it, I highly recommend you watch my video on how to do cuts and shuffles and tips and tricks with the, with the spectator's cards or your own cards. Um, again, there'll be a link in the description to where you can watch that video need a spectator to pick a card to begin with so we have them pick a random card um, and you're gonna the aim is to control this card to the bottom of the deck now in the performance the way I did it is I dribbled the cards and had them say stop wherever I want wherever they want so let's say they say stop there now the card that they say stop at in our case is gonna be the seven of spades now when you continue to dribble the cards back on top of that card, you want to start by not doing it directly on top, but slightly off, and then dribble them like that. That way you've left a little break right where their card is. As you can see, if I lift that back up, we are at the seven of spades. So again, you dribble, they say stop. And when you dribble the rest of the cards on top, start out in the corner. Oops. Start out in the corner. I'm struggling to do it in slow motion, but start out here and then dribble the rest on top. That way when you come to square the deck up, you can just square it up right at their card. It's a nice way to uh, make the spectator think you're losing their card, but actually keeping a break at where it is. Then you can control the card to the top. That's what I do. I just cut it straight to the top. And then you can control that card to the bottom by performing an overhand shuffle, peeling off one card, and then just shuffling the deck as normal. Now, once the chosen card is controlled to the bottom, you can perform the riffle shuffle as many times as you want, explaining what the shuffle looks like how it works and the idea behind the concept of the riffle shuffle. As long as every time you do it, you maintain that card on the bottom. As you can see, so it requires a bit of focus while you're telling the spectator how it works because you will need to remember which side the seven is in. So you know which way to keep it on the bottom. If you do it like that, you'll need to remember it's over there. But you'll need to show them a few times what the riffle shuffle is and explain basically how the shuffle works. Then when you come to shuffle it one more time, make sure the seven's the first card you deal down. And then deal the rest of them down in the shuffle. And you want to spread the cards out. So like so, just spread them out. Then when you square them back up, you want to explain to the spectator that some cards on the right are going to be on top of the left. You next want to cut the cards to a situation where the left cards are on top of the right. This is just to give you a reason to cut the cards. Because what we're going to do next is you are going to pick up the other portion, explain that some on the left are on top of the right. And all you're doing whilst you're explaining this is sliding their card in between the two cards that are on top of it. So it'll originally be like that. You want to just slide it along to the middle, but obviously this is all going to be covered by the rest of the cards. So you're going to slide it over and you can cover this up by tapping on this card. You can go, as you can see, some cards on the left on top of the right. And I've just slid that over right there. That way when you complete the cut, all the cards are set up 
So some are on the left, some are on the right, but only one card is in the middle. Kind of like that, if you imagine. Then when you pick up the cards, this last move is very nice. You want to make sure that your fingers are sort of holding onto the cards like this. So you've got your four fingers across this packet and your four fingers across this packet. And all you're going to do is pull your right hand towards you and your left hand away from you. And one card in the middle will just naturally rotate around your fingers like that. I'll try to put it back and show you again. The faster you do it, obviously the nicer it looks because if you do it fast, it'll jump out like that. And that will be their chosen card. So just one last time, I'll show you how that's done. You want to shuffle the cards so that their card is the first card to deal down. You can spread it out or whatever, show how it works. Square it back up. Cut the deck. Say there's some on the right on top of the left, some on the left on top of the right, and then you want to slide their card to the middle while you're doing that. Complete the cut, and then just pull the cards apart like that. And their card will be the card that jumps out. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Let's move on to another awesome trick. This next trick, I guarantee will blow your mind and have you wondering what just happened. And it will make you doubt your very own eyesight. So watch closely as if you don't enough. You may get fooled. So I have a deck of cards here with me. I'm just going to shuffle it up, make it nice and random. And we need a random card selected by a spectator. So let's just go for this card right here. Now, <coughs> I do not want to see the card, so I'm going to turn around saw the card. Now I am just going to lose uh, the spectator's chosen card somewhere random in the deck like so and then we'll give it a cut and a shuffle to completely lose the card. Now I'm going to break the deck into three piles and these are going to be cards that I will have cut at specific cards. I'm going to try and guess what I think your card is and whereabouts I think it is. So I'll make three attempts at guessing where your card is. I'll go for... So I'll go for this card here. And then I'll split this packet. So there, I think it could be about there. So I've made three predictions all on the bottoms of these piles and I'm going to jumble them up. They could be in a complete random order. It doesn't really matter where, where these piles are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the three cards I think your card may be. And I don't want you to react, but if you see your card, just keep a straight face, okay? So here we are. The first card. The second card. And the third card. So as I said, I don't want you to react if you see your card. Um, if you did, uh, I just want you to keep in mind which card is your card, because I'm going to jumble it up a wee bit. Like so, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you now that I bet I can predict which card is your card and whereabouts it is. Are you ready? 17. Okay, I know that's 
sounds really random. 17 is quite a, quite an odd number. It's, it seems like I've just picked it out of nowhere and it probably doesn't make much sense to you right now, does it? Let me show you why I said the number 17. Are you ready? I am going to deal 17 cards from the bottom of this pile. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and I bet that this card here, the seventeenth card from the bottom, I bet that it is your card. How much would you like to? You, you don't think it is? Why? How do you know that's not your card? How do you know that I've not manipulated it to be? Because you saw it in one of these cards. Well, you would be wrong. As I said from the start of the trick, if you watched close enough, you would see that none of these three cards were your card. And that 17th card, that random number I said, was indeed your chosen card. Now let me know in the comments if that worked on you. Let me know if you got fooled and if you noticed what happened or what went wrong. Do let me know. Now let's move on with the final trick off the video for the penultimate trick in this video as you can see I have a lot of props on my screen right now I am going to show you a really cool trick using these die and this deck of bicycle ghost playing cards and I decided to use these cards for this trick as I think they look pretty good on the black background that we have got. Now we'll come to these props in just a second. I've got myself some paper. I'm going to make a bit of a prediction in a wee second but before we do that um, I would usually hand the deck to the spectator and have them shuffle it and it is a completely free shuffle that they can do deck will be completely random. They can shuffle it as many times as they want, do whatever shuffles they wish. As long as they are happy that they have mixed up the deck entirely, they can give it some cuts. There is no setup required. When they are completely happy with the order of the deck, they can turn it over. They can even examine the cards, whatever they want, as long as they are happy that it is completely random, then we can continue with the trick. Now at this point they'd hand me the deck back and I'd say, okay, cool. What I'm going to do is I am going to make a prediction with this sheet of paper over here. So I'm going to take the lid of this pen and I'm going to write down a card that I think we are going to be needing to know for this trick and we'll come back to my prediction at the end of the trick. So let's, let's take the lid off the pen. And I'll make my prediction now. So I'll just be two seconds while I write it. just so we can come back to that at the end. We'll have no idea what that prediction is, so I'll set it up there and I'll pop the pen just to the side of it so we can definitely not tamper with it and you guys can see it in plain sight for the whole trick. See that I won't be touching it whatsoever. Now in comes the die for the trick. I've got two die here. Uh, they are not loaded, these die. They're not 
not set to roll onto a specific number on each die. They are completely random and free die. Um, they're not biased. And what I would do is I would hand the die to the spectator and have them roll it until they are happy with the numbers that they have rolled to. So they can take the die and they can roll it a couple times. Let's say they well, double sixes. Let's say they're not happy with that. They can keep going until they're satisfied. They've got a random selection. So let's just go one more time. Perfect. A five and a three. Now, what I would say to the spectator is we're going to do some math with the numbers you've rolled to. So to help us keep track of what we're doing, I've got a scrap bit of paper. We're going to be writing some numbers on this. So I would say to them, that what I would need them to do is to add up the two numbers that they have rolled to and write that on the top of the sheet of paper. So in our case, we've got five and three. That gives us eight. Perfect. And we need to remember that number because we're going to come back to it in a sec. Now I would say to them to choose one of the two die. It can be either one. And I just want them to flip upside down to the number that is, or the side that is completely opposite that side, and they can pick either die. Let's say they go for this 5, and they flip it upside down. We've got a 2 on the other side. Nice. And I would say to them to add this new number to your current number. So we have 8 plus 2 gives us 10. Nice. And then we're going to use the die one final time. I would have them pick up the one that they just flipped over and roll it one last time. And with that number that they have rolled to, to add that to the uh, number that we are now on. So we've got 10 plus 4 gives us 14. And that is going to be our final number. trick. Now this number is very important because we are going to use this 14. Uh, what do we have? We had a 4, sorry. We're going to use this 14 and we're going to count down 14 cards. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we can get rid of the deck and we'll get rid of this. Actually, we'll just set it up there. And with the numbers that we are left with on the die, we're going to add them together. We've got 4 and 3 gives us 7. And we're going to count down 7 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the 7th card is the Jack of Spades. Now, if you'll remember, I made a prediction slightly earlier on. Let's go back to this prediction and take a look at what it was, and you'll find that it is indeed the Jack of Spades. For the last trick in this video, I'm going to be performing a really cool math-related is so crazy I can't even explain how it is done and I study math. <laughs> so what we are going to do is we've got a random deck. It's it's a complete deck with 52 cards so all the cards are here nothing's missing and I would usually hand the deck to the spectator and have them shuffle it up as many times as they like since I don't have a spectator here. I'll just shuffle it up, make it nice and random. We'll give it some cuts, it really doesn't matter. It needs to be completely random. There is no setup whatsoever. Great. Now, for this trick, we want to be uh, focused on the values of the as what I am going to do is I'm going to start making some pile 
while stealing from the top. And whatever card we turn over to start the pile, we are going to add cards to the value of that pile until we reach the number 13. So I'll give you an example with the first pile we turn over the top card. We've got a 9, so we would go 10, 11, 12, 13, just like so. We'll move on to the next pile. This time we got another 9, so we go 10, 11, 12, 13. Now if we do turn over an ace, that'll be 1. Uh, jacks are worth 11, queens will be worth 12, and kings will be worth 13. Just a little heads up before we continue. So let's keep going. We've got 10, 11, 12, 13. We've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We've got 1 and that is an ace. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The next pile we've got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We've got 8, we've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And we do have 1 card left over. We'll just set that face down. That'll be our dis the start of our discard pile because what we're going to do is we are actually going to discard some more of these piles. And that is a completely free choice up to the spectator. Now I don't have a spectator here with me, so I'm just going to pick a couple random piles. This is, I promise you, a complete free choice, a complete completely free selection. Let's just go for, say, this pile here. We'll go for this pile here, and I don't know, we'll go this pile right here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, you know what, we'll get rid of one more. We'll go for that one there, leaving us with three, one, two, three random piles, and of course our discard pile. Now these three piles are indeed our spectators pile. Uh, I myself need to make one from the uh, discard pile, so I'll just uh, get rid of a random amount of cards and then I will make my own Wii uh, pile with the remaining cards. In fact, I'll get rid of one more, for example, it can be a random amount that I've got really. And what I am going to do next is I am going to turn over the tops of each card in your pile. So let's see what cards we have. We've got, we had a 9 over this pile. We had an 8 in this pile. And we had a 4 in this pile over here. Now, let's do some math. Let's let's add together the values of each of these cards. So what's that? 9 and 18, that's 17 plus 4 equals 21. Now, how crazy would it be if the amount of cards I picked out happened to be 21? Should we take a look? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And that is the crazy math trick that I really wanted to show you guys. It is so cool how it works. Um, if you want to see a tutorial on how this trick is done, be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments down below. But that is going to be it, sadly, for this video. I hope you all have enjoyed this extra long Magic Monday. It's been so fun to make and so fun to perform these tricks for you guys and teach you how they are done. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like on the video. Your support means 
so much to me. And don't forget to subscribe for more card magic videos. As I say, we're getting so close to 3,000. The sooner we hit it, the sooner I will be giving away not one, not two, but three decks of bicycle playing cards to three lucky winners. So if you want to have yourself a say in what decks I want to give away, let me know in the comments too. But that is going to be it for this video. If you want to see more card magic videos, check out the playlist in the description or up in the corner of the screen right now. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next week's Magic Monday. Good night guys.